Over the years since smartphones became a thing, specifications have been on the continual march upward. Processors have gotten faster, from megahertz in the hundreds to gigahertz in the plural. They've also added cores, with quad and even octa-cores being somewhat commonplace. RAM has increased from a few dozen megabytes to a few gigabytes. Storage has increased too, and data speeds are through the roof. One area that hasn't seen much improvement over the years is battery capacity. Though battery capacities may still be lagging, OEMs are giving us the next best thing by decreasing our charge times. I'm Joe Levi with Pocket Now, and let's take a look at some quick charging technologies that promise to deliver the charge that we need right when we need it. I got my first taste of quick charging with Google's Motorola Made Nexus 6 and its turbocharger. Prior to that experience, I was firmly entrenched in the Qi wireless charging camp. Though relatively slow, the convenience of Qi let me charge my phone whenever I set it down, using this downtime to top off my phone's battery. Quick charging changed all that. Qualcomm began cooking quick charge into its chips back in 2012. The intent? Standardize a method to charge devices faster. Quick Charge 1.0 was devised and enabled phones to charge using 2 amp chargers, much faster than the 500 milliamp, half an amp, that USB 1 and USB 2 provided. Even USB 3 only formally supports up to 900 milliamps, that's 0.9 amps. Qualcomm Quick Charge 1.0 seemed to be more an afterthought than a selling point. Though many phones, over 70, included the feature, few included it on their spec sheets. Qualcomm's first iteration attempted to be backwards compatible and succeeded, but this limited its upward capabilities, and ultimately gave birth to version 2.0. To achieve full charging speeds, a Quick Charge 2.0 enabled device must be paired with a Quick Charge 2.0 certified adapter. Back when Samsung released its Note 3 phablet, it included a micro USB 3.0 port. This double wide port and relatively rigid cable helped decrease charge times, but required a special cable and compatible charger or compatible USB port. Needless to say, it didn't stick around very long. Subsequently, Samsung has gotten into the quick charging game, using its adaptive fast charge technology and chargers designed for that standard instead of Qualcomm's. It's impressive too. The Galaxy S6 Edge can be charged with up to four hours of use with only 10 minutes on the proprietary charger. The most recent entrant into the quick charging race is Oppo with its VOOC or VOOC flash charge technology. Like other charging technologies, VOOC is based on five volt DC power. However, like other quick chargers, the ways Oppo reduce charge time is by boosting the amperage and voltage through a special charger. The challenge OEMs face when boosting voltage and amperage is with resistance, heat, and managing the two in a manner that will enable quick charging without making your battery explode. Oppo accomplishes this by increasing the number of pins delivering power to the battery in its latest devices to eight. Most batteries only have four pins, and the number of the pins in the cable has been increased to seven. Obviously, this means you'll need special cables. Oppo has colored the inside of its VOOC compatible chargers and its cables to green to help you identify them. Oppo has also moved the charging controller out of the phone into the adapter, thereby moving the heat generated by that circuit into the adapter itself rather than keeping it all pent up inside the phone, which results in a much cooler phone while charging and helps accelerate the charging cycle. To prevent users from damaging devices that are not equipped with VOOC technology, Oppo's chargers are able to recognize compatible devices and use standard charging in those cases where VOOC isn't present. How do these three standards stack up? Well, after 30 minutes of charging, the results are obvious. Oppo is the clear winner. Unlike other devices, Oppo can flash charge with the screen on too. After 60 minutes, well, it's pretty much game over for our battery life woes. Looking at this table, we can see that with the screen on, Oppo charges up to 71% in half an hour, whereas the Galaxy S6 only makes it to 25. The Nexus 6 is a little better at 35%, and the iPhone 6 Plus only makes it up to 12%. But it's really at that one hour time. With the screen off, the Oppo N3 gets 96%, that's impressive. 
Oppo's VOC or VOOC is the latest player in the quick charging game. As you'd probably expect, it's in the lead. For now. What's more important here is that we have players from three different camps that have all recognized the need for a better way to charge our phones. They've come up with three very similar, yet significantly different methods to solve that problem. So, although our battery capacities still haven't caught up with the other specs on the spec sheets of our modern handhelds, our chargers certainly have. One thing we noticed in our testing is that the percentages and the times of our devices varied quite a bit. Environmental conditions attributed to differences in times, and also different devices that had different things installed on them and hence running in the background also affected charge times. So your charge times, regardless of if you're using one of these technologies or not, is going to vary somewhat from our test cases. If you like quick charging, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you'll want to make sure that you do that so you don't miss out on any new cool stuff coming down the line. If you want to see more information about the Samsung Galaxy S6 or the Oppo N3 or other devices, we've got videos for you over at pocketnow.com. You won't want to miss those either. For Pocket Now, comparing ways that we can make our phones last longer right when we need them, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time.